are going to study the third group of medications that work on renin angiotensin aldosterone system, RAS. RAS has long been identified as a significant contributor to pathogenesis of hypertension. Efforts have been invested into finding medications that can effectively modify RAS responses. After this lecture, I wish that we can achieve the following objectives. A renin inhibitor blocks the RAS responses by binding to the renin, prohibiting renin's catalysis effect on conversion of angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. As it stops the first step in the RAS responses, the subsequent reactions such as vasoconstriction and retention of sodium and water are prohibited. Then, blood pressure, preload, and afterload all decrease. Pharmacologically, a renin inhibitor belongs to the category of antihypertensives. The only direct renin inhibitor available is aliskirin, which is taken orally. Here is the diagram that we have been seeing in the previous two lectures. This is the normal physiological mechanism of RAS, maintaining the normal blood pressure. A renin inhibitor directly affects the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. It stops the chain reactions of RAS at the early stage. Following the effects of renin inhibitor, conversion of angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1 is blocked. The waterfall effects lead to decreasing angiotensin 2. Therefore, blood vessel dilates, blood pressure drops, and afterload decreases. Decreasing angiotensin II also affects the aldosterone secretion, interrupting reabsorption of sodium and water in the kidneys and resulting in decreased preload. So far, we have seen three different groups of medications working on RAS, renin inhibitor, ACE inhibitors, and angiotensin II receptor blockers. Here is a comparison chart of the therapeutic mechanisms among medications from these three groups. Working on RAS, renin inhibitor works at the first step of RAS, preventing angiotensinogen converting into angiotensin 1. ACE inhibitors work on the second conversion, preventing angiotensin 1 converting into angiotensin 2. Angiotensin II receptor blockers block the receptors that angiotensin II binds to. The levels of angiotensin are affected by these medications. A renin inhibitor decreases both levels of angiotensin I and angiotensin II. ACE inhibitors decrease level of angiotensin II but increase level of angiotensin I. With ARBs, there will be not as much receptors to bind to. The result will be increasing level of angiotensin II. As ACE inhibitors decrease level of angiotensin II and increase level of angiotensin I, a non-ACE pathway of converting angiotensin I to angiotensin II will be activated. In addition, the low angiotensin II level increases the plasma renin activity. Under effect of ARBs, increased angiotensin II means increasing competition for receptor bindings, as well as increasing aldosterone secretion. While renin inhibitor produces no rebound hypertension, both ACE inhibitors and ARBs will lead to rebound hypertension once the medication is stopped abruptly. A renin inhibitor is well tolerated. There are no major adverse effects reported in clinical trials. The most common reported side effects are headache, dizziness, and fatigue. The dose-related GI disturbance is diarrhea. Cough is rare. Only about one-third to one-half of the rate reported with usage of ACE inhibitors. Hyperkalemia rarely occurs, but incidents increase when the renin inhibitor is used with combination of ACE inhibitors. Nursing care for adverse effects when patient is taking a renin inhibitor includes the following. Patient education. Patient education on adverse effects and management of adverse effects should be included. 
monitor blood pressure and heart rate prior to taking medication. This is a standard nursing care for any patient who takes any medication that affect blood pressure and or heart rate. As renin inhibitor or a lascarin drops blood pressure, monitoring and preventing orthostatic hypotension is necessary. Teach the patient that dizziness and lightheadedness can be symptoms for low blood pressure, and the patient is advised to change position slowly from lying to sitting, from sitting to standing. Diarrhea is usually dose related. Adjusting dosage might be helpful. Therefore, teach the patient to report to physician if experiencing diarrhea. Follow up with the physician on a regular basis. Some blood works, including complete blood count and basic metabolic panel, should be monitored. Alaskirin can slightly increase blood levels of BUN, creatinine, potassium, and uric acid, and it can decrease hemoglobulin and hematocrit. Hyperkalemia can be a concern if the patient is using alaskirin together with salt substitute, potassium supplement, potassium sparing diuretics, and or ACE inhibitors. Patient should always be taught on calling 911 if experiencing signs and symptoms that are anaphylactic or life-threatening. The only indication for a renin inhibitor is hypertension. Medications directly affecting rest should not be used in patients who are pregnant because of the potential harm to developing fetus. The other contraindication for alaskirin is breastfeeding moms. Renin inhibitors should also be used with caution on patients who have history of angioedema, severe renal dysfunction, nephrotic syndrome, renal vascular hypertension, and patients who are on dialysis therapy. It is unknown how patients with significant renal dysfunction react to the therapy. Taking medication with cautions and monitoring is necessary. Nursing care for contraindications includes thorough intake of history and physical examination. Teach the patient to report to the physician if pregnant. Changing medication to manage blood pressure is necessary. Here is a list of drugs and food that might interact with a renin inhibitor. Medications affecting RAS, including ACE inhibitors, angiotensin II receptor blockers, and aldosterone antagonists all increase the risk for hypotension, renal impairment, and hyperkalemia. Atorvastatin may increase level of alaskirin. They can be used together with caution. When both cyclosporin and etraconazole greatly increase the blood level of alaskirin and may lead to undesired events, it is contraindicated for using these medications with a renin inhibitor. Alaskirin may reduce the peak level of furosemide. Therefore, using these two medications together reduces the effects of furosemide. NSAID, potassium sparing diuretics, potassium supplement, increase risk for hyperkalemia. The following medication and diet intake, including rifampin, juice, and high-fat diet, would decrease alaskirin's level and effect. Rifampin, when used together with rifampin, adjusting dose of alaskirin may be needed. Fruit juice, including apple, grapefruit, an orange juice can decrease alaskirin's level. It is found that high-fat meal may significantly decrease the alaskirin level. Nursing care for patients taking alaskirin includes a thorough medication history intake, making a list of medications that can be useful to avoid drug-to-drug -drug interactions, increasing doses for alaskirin if using alaskirin with a medication that can decrease alaskirin's effects. Decreasing dosage of alaskirin might be needed if we use alaskirin together with other medication that can increase alaskirin's level. Monitor potassium level is needed for patients taking alaskirin, especially when patient takes AC inhibitors together with alaskirin. Avoid salt substitute. Correcting fluid volume imbalance or salt depletion might be needed before initiating therapy with alaskirin. 
Here are highlights of nursing care when taking care of patients who takes a list gearing. Follow up with the physician on a regular basis. Teach the patient that medication will take effect two weeks after initiating or adjusting dosage. Patients should report to the physician if experiencing swelling face or neck. Patients should call 911 if having difficulty breathing. Although angioedema is rarely reported, the patient should still be educated about it and be treated immediately. Renal function should be monitored regularly. Just like what we do when taking care of patients taking antihypertensive medications, we should monitor blood pressure, especially when the patient takes combination of multiple antihypertensive medications. Teach the client on monitoring and reporting adverse effects experienced. Aliskirin is the only direct renin inhibitor available. Thank you for spending time with me. I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture.